Two weeks, two weeks today, West Ham restart their Premier League campaign against Wolves. As fixtures are confirmed, 5.30 kickoff. Um, yeah, so here we go, not long to go, is it? And I have to admit, I have to admit, my excitement's gone up a little bit. Just a notch, just a smidgen. No, don't get ahead of yourself. Um, if you've done the video, I've done the video, i done the video. If you watched the video a week ago, you know I wasn't that fast, but my excitement's crept up just, just a bit. It might creep up a bit more between now and then. I expect it to. But I think it's because I just need a distraction. I say I need a distraction. I need to take my mind off live music. I know I've said it in other videos, but this week's been bad. It's really getting to me. This is the first summer in about... 15 years or something I don't have a concert and because it's Kasabian and Liam Gallagher time if they were still going ahead so this week I've been trying to listen to as much live music as possible concerts on the YouTube I've been listening to I don't know if it's making it worse I'm sort of getting a bit of a fix but not enough to fill the void so it's making me miss live music even more I'm almost punishing myself that's what the Penal League is, isn't it? It's a compromise. I'm compromising. That's what we're going to have to do. To Whoa, stay on the radiator. Bloody. It's got a mind of its own, that arm. I need to sell a tape or something. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Penal League compromising. But we're not here to talk about Penal League. Well, we are actually. I've got quite a bit about Penal League. After the Thomas So Check talk, two things for him, though. First of all, he's staying. I say he's staying. He's staying until the end of July now. It looks pretty much signed, sealed and delivered without the actual signed, sealed and delivered part. Um, he wants to stay, we also want him to stay and his club's obviously going to let him stay. I wonder if we have to pay them actually. We paid him four million for the loan until the end of June in normal circumstances but these aren't those so we've had to get permission to extend it so he can play the remaining fixtures. Um, which which he's doing, which is good. He's a big part, he's a big, big player for us. Not just height but um, in terms of what he brings to the team. How a player can be that important after just four games is quite... It's bad, isn't it? Let's be honest with you. It's bad. It says more about the club than it does about Thomas Solchek, in my opinion. Um, he's played four fixtures, but he's looked good in them all, isn't he? He missed a couple because he had that injury after the, at the Brighton game. But when he played, he looked good. When he didn't play, we missed him. And his first name, one of the first names on the team sheet, as far as I'm concerned, I'd be surprised if Moyes isn't thinking the same as well. Um, so yeah, he's here to stay, which is a bit of a relief. I, we always expected he would, didn't we? Why wouldn't he? Um, but the second part is the sad part. It's not really. It's it's just the common sense part, to be honest. That is, if we get relegated, he won't be staying. Um, the Athletic, which is a really reliable source. I really like the Athletic, actually. Um, they've said that someone next close to Thomas Solchek has said that if West Ham get relegated, he will not be signing for West Ham. He has no intention of playing in the Championship. Now, as we know, if we stay up, his move becomes permanent automatically. £60 million a fee, and um, that goes over to his club, and he becomes a West Ham player for good, uh, which is good news. I'm excited for that. But if we get relegated, not having it, he's off. He's away home. He's not staying. And we can't really blame him, can we? He owes us nothing. He owes us zilch. Nada. Um, it's not a lack of loyalty or anything like that. He's come in. He's played well. This is assuming he continues to play well. And if we stay, if we go down, it's not his fault if he's done the business. But he's going to be a, he's going to be one of our most important players, I think, between now and the end of the season. To be fair, so is Bowen. And if we stay up, I think what I'm going to do at the end of the season is look back at January and say that's where we sort of retained our Premier League status, possibly. Um, I say I was always say won it. We haven't won anything. I want another season in Premier League. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say? Because in January, we went and got Bowen and Solchek. And if Solchek signs for good, it's £40 million we've spent. It's a lot of money for us. Um, we've signed those where maybe our counterparts in the in the relegation battle have stood still, perhaps. Um, so it's good, it's good. But yeah, so he'd he'd be off, and I don't blame him at all. He owes us nothing. Um, it's expected, really, isn't it? And to be honest with you, even if we could make it permanent, I think getting relegated, the last thing we want to do is spend sixty million pounds on a player. To be honest, I, I just couldn't see that happening. So let's hope we don't have to have that conversation. But it's good to get a bit of clarity. It's not confirmed or anything, but I think it's it's expected, isn't it? Right, some other another few things. Right, the penalty fixtures are confirmed. Yeah, we know that. Oh, um, friendlies. We're playing a friendly. Um, 
midweek. I think we're playing one on Tuesday, maybe. And then one on the Saturday. Um, or is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday. It's Tuesday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Saturday. We're playing QPR and Crystal Palace. So the Palace one, I think, would imagine would be really, like, not pointless, but it's neither side are going to want to get injuries, are they? Uh, I just bumped my elbow on the chair. What on earth is this? How's that happened? Anyway, it wasn't sore, so it's all right. Just in case you heard the clunk. If not, rewind and play again, see if you hear a clunk. It's bumped it. So, we'll play Palace, but the, the QPR one's interesting. I think you can read too much into it. There's a lot of, oh, is David Moyes looking at as a, I don't think he is, in a friendly behind closed doors. I'd be worried if he was looking at him there. That's the worst, worst circumstances to go scout a player, isn't it? A friendly mid-season behind closed doors with a global pandemic. Why would you judge a player then? Christ. Um, so I wouldn't read too much into that. Unfortunately, because I'd like to see him at West Ham. I don't think it's, that position is necessary unless we sold a couple of players. But I just don't think it's a thing. Jordan Hugo, of course, might be playing for QPR against us, which will be... <sighs> I don't know. I don't want to be harsh and say I hope David Moyes isn't looking at Jordan Hugo, but he deserves a shot, doesn't he? He deserves a fair crack. He's not had one of them. Um, but I just... I think it, it's just a bit... Lack of ambition, if our ambition is to see Jordan Hugo as potentially the main striker or one of the main strikers at the club next season. Do you know, We I think we need another striker next year, uh, regardless of what happens with Ali? Or then we need a other one because um, Moyes clearly does not like a jetty. I don't. I don't I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't like a jetty. I think he hasn't had a shot. I think he's clearly got something about him to have that, that many appearances, international caps, European football at that age. He's clearly got talent, but Moyes just does not want him. He, he, the last for the season World Cup, he wasn't even on the bench. He was getting excluded from the the bench. So hopefully he gets on because I'd rather have. A jetty on the bench and not have him on the bench just purely because he's a striker. So I do think we need another striker next season. And then um, I'll be a bit disappointed if that the solution to that problem is Jordan Hugo. It's, it's harsh, but I'm all for going into the championship. But he's not even like ripping the championship up. He's done well, but that's it. Loads of players have done well in championship. There's players that's done exceedingly well in championship and failed to make the step up to the Premier League. So, like Jordan Rhodes, for example. Prime example, Jordan Rhodes. Too good for the championship, not good enough for the Premier League. That That's a thing. There's, there's, a, there's a gap in there. Um, Sam, Sam Byram, he's another player. Too good for the championship, not good enough for the Premier League. Ryan Fett, well, don't start that, Gio, just shut up. Um, move on to next. What have I got next? Um... Crowd noise. Oh, this is Brady's column. But before I get into that, I just want to talk about our patron very quickly. Promote our patron. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash. Yeah, I keep doing that. Forward slash. Watch the elbows. Hammer's chat. If you want to sponsor the channel, links in description below. It's probably easier to click on that and then type it all in. Um, you can help us out. It's much appreciated. In two weeks, we'll have lots of new content. The patrons get a little video first thing in the morning with me and Gonzo because we'll have new team news. And then you'll also get a player ratings video late that night, or it's usually the day after the game, truth be told, we usually put it up then. So you get that if you if you join the Patreon. Link's in the description. Have a little read and see what you get in. Hopefully you join us. But before I go on to the Brady stuff, let me just click here. Let me get an image up. This is this is reassuring, by the way. I am 50-50 about relegation. Still am. I'll go into a bit more next week when restart gets a bit closer. But have a look at this. This is good, isn't it? Average opponent position. So the, the Sky Sports have taken a look at every club's remaining fixtures. And, well, this is the average position they are in, in the league table. Bournemouth, top. This is not good, by the way. Obviously, the lower the number, the, the better the calibre of opposition you've got between now and the season finishing. So Bournemouth have got, and Palace have got the most difficult fixtures. That's good news for us with Bournemouth in the relegation zone. Villa are just in third. That's also good news for us. I feel bad because um, John watches these and he's a Villa fan and he's probably getting a bit angry right now. I apologise, mate, but that's Sky Sports' thing. That's not mine. Uh, Brighton, because they can get sucked into it. They don't want the Premier League coming back, do they? They've been very negative from the start, which I understand why. It's about neutral grounds and stuff, but you do get the impression that they'd rather not finish the season. 
So there we go, three of our relegation rivals in the top four for hardest fixtures, and far below them is Watford. Perfect for West Ham. We are, what's that, 20, 19, 18, 17, 60, 50, 14th. We're 14th, uh, at an average position of 11.3. We'll take that. We have to take that. There's no one below us that's a relegation rival. I do think Newcastle are a bit lucky. Um, I thought they might have got sucked into it, but then they, they had a big win just before the season broke up, and that sort of pushed them away a little bit. But this is reassuring. This is good. This has maybe moved me from 50-50 to 52-48 in favour of staying up. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I, I just thought it was interesting. I thought I'd share it. Sprinkle a bit of positivity in the video because that is positive. That's good stuff. I like it. Um, anyway, Brady done a column. As always, on the sun. Um, there's nothing really I'm going to talk about. Crowd noise. On Sky Sports, there's going to be a feature. You can have crowd noise. Um, it's not getting pumped into the stadium. So the players won't hear it. But if you're watching it on Sky Sports, the football and Sky, which our first three fixtures are on, there's going to be an option. I don't know what crowd noise it's going to be. Because you can't, it's not like you can go back to our last home game and think, oh, we'll just take the 19 minutes of crowd noise and put it out. Because it's going to be silent for half an hour, isn't it? It's just going to be very quiet. So I get what they're doing. I get what they're doing. Sky Sports are a broadcasting company and they're trying to do what's best for the broadcasting part of it. it. Makes no difference to me. I'm not even sure. I won't have it on because I'll be listening to Charlie. Charlie and Tom will be doing watch alongs on the channel for every game. So I will be listening to them while I'm watching the game. That's an option. And the lower tier is going to be covered up with some sort of Sounds like a fan banner. I'm not even sure what it is, to be honest with you. It sounds like it's just going to be one great... It's going to be one great covering of the lower tier. And it's... And it's I don't know what they're going to do. Take a picture of the London Stadium filled up and then... It's almost like a big photograph, isn't it? It's worth trying, I guess. Um, I don't even know what you'll see with the London Stadium. The stand's too far away. You'll see the... Carpet and that's it. I don't even know you even get to see the lower tier unless when zoomed out at the start. It always zooms out at the start of the game, doesn't it? When they're saying, right, here we go, and then it zooms in a little bit to the kickoff part. And um, says you're going to see toying costs. I don't know why would you want to, I don't even know why you want to see the toying costs. Um, but they've got that camera now, don't they? That's like in midair, I think, and sort of moves about the pitch because that gives you that 360 rotation thing. Um, so I imagine it's that's it's going to zoom in on the the coin toss. I don't even. I'm not even surprised they're doing the coin toss. To be honest, I thought it's something they would have taken out. Rock, scissors, paper, and see. Uh, then you can decide what you want to do. There's a celebration camera as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we do for celebrations for the eight goals we score between now and the end of the season. Um, but that's obviously at the London Stadium only. So we'll probably see. Opponents using salvation camp. Nah, none of this negativity. I get what they're trying to do. It's all it's all a bit artificial to me. It makes no difference. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. But I understand the idea. That's where I am. Neutral, you could say. Um, anyway, I'm going to disappear now. I just want to talk about Thomas Silchet, really. Which is just... I think it's just common sense. I think it's good he's staying. And it's a bit of a relief, actually. But the fact that he doesn't want to stay if we get relegated. Don't blame him. Wouldn't expect him to. Nothing to see here, really. You have sat chatting for 13 minutes. Bloody hell. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. I may do a video tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. Depends what crops up. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. There's a sky you around here and all that in here. Two weeks till West Ham's back. So enjoy this weekend and next weekend. Enjoy. Trust me. Enjoy it. I'll catch you in a bit.